modeler so today we're going to have a bit of a look through this old kit here this is an old airfix handley page the, the 400 uh, now like i say it is a pretty old kit so don't expect too much in this one but i do love this aircraft it's absolutely awesome um, but i have seen these built up um, and they do look gorgeous if they're done the right way but there's a lot of work to get them to the point where they do look good because what you're going to see in this box, it is a very basic kit. I mean, you've got to remember this is this has been around for a while. It's not a definitely not a new release. She, she has been on the market for quite a while. I got this one second hand, as you can probably see by the condition of the box, it's a bit dusty and so on. Been on the shelf for a while, but beautiful box art really shows off that aircraft, like just a, a gorgeous looking machine. Um, I mean, I've got a fascination with this era of flying, where I mean, you had you had to be a pretty brave man to get in one of these things, but to get up there and actually start shooting at each other as well. It was just, yeah, it was a whole different era that, you know, we'll probably never see the likes of again. But as I say, box art's really nice. Not much else on the box on the sides and that. So what we'll do, we'll open him up and we'll have a look inside. And like I say, don't expect too much, guys. And all the stuff's out of the bags because it's, like I say, I bought it second hand. It's been floating around for a while. So um, uh, first we've got our instruction book here. On the front, a little bit of information there about the aircraft and so on. Uh, then we go into our instructions. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see a bit more of them. So first up, we're going to be starting to put, um, it looks like our wings are going together here. Now, these are one of those things where people have a lot of trouble with this, getting these things to, you know, line up with the spaces and, uh, you know, the props and that. It's, um, it, it can be a real issue. You've got to take your time with these things. I mean, I know there's jigs around. We can make your own jig to make them stand up correctly and all that sort of thing. Um, does show you the the rigging, the, the, where the rigging goes and all that sort of stuff as well. Um, it, it definitely pays to do the rigging on this aircraft because that's what really brings it to life. When it gets all that rigging on it, it's absolutely beautiful. Now, like I say, I've seen one of these built um, in a model comp quite a while ago, and it was absolutely gorgeous. But you know, you could just see the amount of work that had to go into that putting it together. The other part of our wings there. Uh, down here we're starting on the fuselage now. Uh, when you see inside the plastic parts, there's not a lot inside this fuselage. Very, very basic stuff. There's not a great deal in it. So, um, I mean, obviously you're going to have to do the wood grain painting, all that sort of thing, and um, you know, put some extra detail in there if you want to. Not that you'll see a great deal inside the fuselage. She is pretty well covered up. There's a couple little windows, but they're not big enough to see much through them. So, uh, if you want to put extra detail on that, that's fine, but you know, well, just be aware, it will be covered up most of it. Then we're starting to put our uh, pilots in here. These look like fuel. Uh, we've got our bomb racks, all that's going in there as well. We've got the bombs as well, if you want to put the bombs in there. Not that you'll ever see them, unless you want to sort of show off underneath the aircraft, I guess. Um, but, you know, as you can see, there's, there's minor detail in there. So, um, I mean, if you want to build it straight out of the box, that's fine. There's a little bit of detail in there, but you know, it, it does it does look much better when you put extra detail in. But like I say, just be aware, most of it will be covered up anyway. Um, up here, well, the fuselage is already together, so up here we're putting the top part of the fuselage on here. Um, the, you, you've got to be aware of the ribbing too on all these all these wings and stuff like that, that you don't sand them out when you're trying to sand everything back. The tail wing part is fairly complex um, because you've got that triple tail on it. Um, and with the, the spaces in between, getting them all to line up and all that sort of stuff. Again, you can use a jig um, or just take your time and um, you know let it all dry before you try and fiddle around with it too much. Um, again, the rigging um, really, really brings this to life. A lot of work in the rigging around this tile because there is a bit of rigging around it and um, it's very, very fine space to actually be doing the rigging in. Uh, so the tile's together there, then we're starting to do it. Um, the cover for the bottom here, another cover over the top. Um, down here, there's more bombs. We've got rigging going on here. Um, it shows you where it goes through the wings and all that sort of thing goes up. Then we've got our engines going together up here. Uh, now the engines, when you see them in the plastic parts, they're, they're not too ugly, but they're not super detailed either. But they, they do suffice for what they are. I mean. Um, it's very plain, all the covers are on and stuff like that. But again, you know, if you want to play around, do a bit more detail, that's fine. It's up to you to do that. But the way these things are mounted on very fine um, bits of plastic. So again, take your time. Um, it can be a real hassle to get these things to sit correctly. Uh, I know like with, with having like, um, like four or three or four um, pins that actually hold to the fuselage, 
it can be a little bit of a um, hassle. So just take your time, guys, and get it right. Uh, over here, all our engines are on there. Um, we're putting the top part of the wings on here now. And then the outer wings go on. And then we've got the landing gear. Now, again, landing gear on this thing, um, because it's a fairly big aircraft, and these things end up being a bit fiddly because of the way they're put together with all these little parts up here. Um, so it's going to be, again, take your time, um, because these will be very, very flimsy. Um, and you've got to get them to sit square and all that sort of stuff. So take your time with them, guys. Then we've got our rear skid going on there. That's built in two parts as well. Uh, machine guns and other little bits of detail going on here as well. And then we've got our markings over here. Now, I'm not sure from memory, okay, there's two. It looks like that we've got two versions here that we can do. Um, so, I think it's two. Stay there. Yep, there's two versions there for you to do, guys. So, uh, very, very plain markings. There's nothing um, outstanding about the colourings or markings on this thing. Very, very plain, but it is an awesome looking aircraft when it's built properly. So, I put the... The decals went into a plastic bag uh, back when I bought the kit, which has been around for a couple of years now, I've had it here. Um, and already you can see there's damage on a little bit of it down here. Uh, that was done before I put them in the bag, because obviously sliding around in here with the parts, it's, it's actually damaged to them there as well. Um, so that'll be one that's I'll probably have to paint over to fill in the things, or I might even have some spares around here. I dare say I've got some spares of these. But um, it always pays to put your your decals in a sealed plastic bag and try and protect them because they are very important and they, they do go off, especially when you've had them around for a while. And as you can see by the condition of the sheet that used to go on the decals, they weren't great when I got them. But here's our parts guys and as you can see, it, it is some nice ribbing. I'll just zoom in a little bit again guys, just give me a second here. So you can see everything a little bit clearer. But as you can see, the, the, the ribbing is on there and it is something that you can actually destroy by sanding it too much because um, it is fairly heavy ribbing. ribbing. Um, now, I don't know the real aircraft just how heavy the ribbing is on it or whether that does need to be taken back a bit. There's some research I will have to do on this thing um, to check that, but it does look very severe on there. I don't know whether the real aircraft was that severe, but um, the detail is all there anyway. On here, looks like these are the covers for over the top in the spaces. We've got our props here. Now I can see a little bit of flashing on those. It's not major, but it is there. Um, you can probably see it best on the end of this part here. You can see the flashing hanging off that. Um, the small parts obviously will have like your seam running around everything that'll have to be cleaned up. I can see that on the props as well. And one of the things I, I don't like is how they've joined the props by the tips to the the sprue like that because you'll lose your shape you've got to actually sand that off and then reshape the tips of your, your props so that's a yeah that's another issue now the other thing is too these are going to be wooden so you have to you know do your wooden painting over your your props as well but uh, to be honest for something that's been around as long as this thing has the flashing's not that bad and the molding's not that thick um, I've seen kits of this age that the molding's just ridiculously thick this one's not quite that bad um, obviously it'll be a bit, a bit more clean up work in this than it would be in more of a modern kit but still it's it's pretty good for, for its age. Uh, on here these are all the spaces between our wings here um, again they're joined at the tips which you have to be careful you cut them away you don't lose the pin that actually goes into the recesses um, cut them away from that and then sand them down. Uh, these ones are fairly heavy we've got the finer ones down here again there, there'll be There'll be seam marks around these that will have to be cleaned up as well, but um, they shouldn't be too much of a problem. Big, long, flat parts like that, they should be fine. Um, but looking around some of this detail here, these are the machine guns. They actually look quite good. I'll just put my glasses on, guys, so I can see them a little bit better. And, yeah, they're not too bad at all. Actually, they're, they're, they're fairly fine. There's a bulb on the end here that has to be cut off, and they're, they're underneath the, about the midway down the barrel there has to be taken off. And there is a small seam that runs along them you'll have to clean up as well. But they're actually not too bad. And just look at that part there. It's got the ribs over it as well. Very, very fine, but they are there. So it's nice to see little bits of detail like that that, that are in there. Okay, one of our fuselage halves. Now, this is what I was saying about detail inside this thing. So you have got your, your wiring braces down there, all that sort of stuff. And there is a bit of detail built into the sides there. 
but the unfortunate thing is you've got these big ugly injector pin marks all the way through it um, so yeah it's, it'll take a bit of work but to clean those out um, but they may be far enough away that you don't lose much of this detail but um, it could be ass. So that one up underneath there you'd be lucky to see that one to be honest but this one down here you definitely will you take that one out but there's enough space between it and the rigging there that it shouldn't destroy the, the look too much and we've got two in here one right in the middle of the rigging there but that should be covered up there'll be a piece that goes over that you won't see that one hopefully the same one the nose there the rest you definitely won't see at the back there okay one of our wings here now this one here a bit of flashing as you can see on the ends there it's only like real feathery sort of flashing it's not thick or anything like that um, it all looks to be not too bad so all your injector pin marks are definitely on the right side we've got a piece there that's sort of knocked out where it's come away from the sprue uh, like I say it's been rattling around the box for years goodness knows how long um, my mate had it for before I got it um, but you can see it looks like a material sort of um, finish they've got over that and not, as, not just the ribbing but it looks like a um, linen sort of finish they got to it as well so if you sand that you'll probably lose that because it is very very fine you can only just see it on there so that that is nice if you paint it up right it should be fine other half of their fuse large same thing guys all injector pin marks are in exactly the same places but just opposite side obviously and here's one of our wings it's um, it's not actually glued together it's just sort of sitting together there at the moment but again you can see on the top here it's very heavy handed but they have got that linen look to the in between the ribs there as well um, and just looking at the fit of those two, that's, I don't know how that's ended up together, it just has, my mate might have stuck it in there, but it's not too bad, there's a bit of a step up there, so I'll have to clean up whatever it is that's holding that up in a way, but um, they're actually not too bad, it's not a bad fit for a really old kit. Uh, another bit of wing here, this will be off our tail, as you can see, flashing on that, but again it's just that feathery stuff, see like that just, that just falls off that stuff, so it's, it's no big issue. Uh, be easy enough to clean up just take your time don't sort of destroy the parts just take it in nice and gently and trim them off and here's another part of our tail and you can see these injector points have to be taken off and cleaned up but it's not too bad more wing uh, here's our engines and there is a bit of flashing on these especially around the radio grills here I can see there's quite a bit around the edges of those maybe you can see that on the camera hopefully um, there is a bit of flashing around here as well. Uh, steering wheel there, exhaust pipes. The exhaust pipes are actually not too bad. Um, like they're not they're not super detailed or anything like that, but they definitely definitely suffice for what they're going to be. So, but again, you've got two knobs on there to be taken off, and there is a seam line that runs right around them that'll have to be cleaned off there as well. But as you can see, these are the worst for the flashing over here. That's yeah, it's pretty heavy-handed flashing on there, but. Um, yeah, it's not overly bad. I think they're foot pedals or something there. I'm not sure. I'll have to see when we put it together, I guess. Um, the steering wheel there is a bit odd. They've got two two ugly knobs that have to be cut off the sides of it. Um, so again, be careful when you take those off. Sand the back and clean it up very carefully. And here's those fine parts I was telling you about that all go together and a little bit of flashing on them, not too bad. But you can see there's a couple of places where the, the, uh, the, the injector pins hang off, you have to be cleaned up. Um, and they're joined again down here right on the tips, so be careful where you cut them off as well, otherwise you'll lose the, the recess pins. Um, and yeah, you'll have a nightmare trying to you know, correct that. But um, they're not as flimsy as I remember them being, so they mightn't be too bad. These guys on the end here, they are definitely are fairly flimsy over here, like just touch them, you can see how flimsy they are. So when you're working with fine stuff like that, really, really take your time, guys. Um, I mean, you can replace it as well with, with other bits of sprue, or even you probably get metal replacements, I'm not sure. But, um, yeah, just take your time. It looks like the back off a big giant bomb, that thing. But um, here we go with, the, looks like the underneath part, or it might be down along the tail. I'm not sure with that one. But you've got your ribbing in there. This will be a part that won't be seen anyway, but... Um, it's not too bad and this is part of our bomb racks here this will be the midsection of our main wing um, again a little bit of flashing around here but it's not too bad but it's joined in like a heap of places like three on each side there so be careful trimming it away 
like, like a lot of these things with these older kits, guys, you just got to take your time and do it. Um, you're getting a sea flash on this part here, but it's that real fine feathery stuff, it's not too bad. Um, some of these older kits, you get big thick flashing that has to be um, filed back or cut back rather than just sand it. Um, here's our bombs, they're quite nice actually. You can see flashing in the fine parts back here, so I'd probably be inclined to use like a, a really um, nice fresh number 11 blade, get in there and trim them out there nice and carefully um, to clean those up a little bit. Um, but they don't look too bad because there's a rib around there um, for the detail and it doesn't run into where they're joined to the sprue so hopefully you won't you won't sort of get rid of that rib and it should be able to stay there if you glue them together carefully. Here's our pilots and while while they're not again super detailed they definitely suffice for what they are. You can definitely see um, their little hats and goggles and all that sort of stuff so they've got all the stuff there. There's a seam line, a couple of injector pin marks, a couple of little um, sink holes in there um, so a little bit of work in them if you want to put them in the kit guys but um, they'll be fine for what they are here's a little like pointing Jerry incoming um, again a little seam uh, sink mark in the front there where two inject pin marks on the back and the seam line around him but again definitely dressed in the right outfit and you can see his goggles and muffs and all that sort of thing there so they're definitely fine for what they are uh, more of our wing here we go with this looks like tyres, bits of landing gear, maybe a fuel drum is there. And again there is definitely flash around a lot of these parts and the um, jack to pins <coughs> come off quite a few of these as well. Um, but they're not too bad and that, that obviously is the, um, the foam padding that goes around the, the cockpit there. Um, so it's got some nice bits of detail on there but just be again be careful when you cut this away and clean that up that you don't lose that detail. But that's not too bad at all actually guys I've seen a lot worse that's for sure an old kiss like this and there's a little fellow that's sitting in there uh, not much to him but he actually doesn't look too bad he's got a seam you'll have to clean up there's injector pin mark on his bum but obviously if he's sitting in the seat so you're not going to see that so just sand that flat so he sits in the seat nicely but he's not too bad either all the details there for him so he looks quite good for what he's supposed to be um, more of our midsection of our wing there by the way and this one here is fairly clean actually uh, but again you can see that nice um, finish that's in there in between the, the ribbing it's um, again, it's sort of hard I can feel it's a little bit rough but it looks so so fine like it definitely gives a look of um, material but you have to be very very careful if you don't sand that away when you, especially when you join them together and clean up the seams that you don't get rid of that it would be a shame to lose that and here's all our little bits and pieces that have fallen off there's a little machine gun there there's bits of landing gear, there's bits of spacing, uh, all sorts of things lying around the bottom of the box here. Like I say, I've had this thing around for a while guys. And here's our clear parts, which actually I'll put those in that clear plastic bag um, when I turn off the camera. But I can see these have actually got fairly bad distortion. There's like a sink mark right in the middle of those windows. You can see it, it's like a, everything sort of focuses in like a little magnifying pit in the middle of them. So maybe um, or maybe sort of sand them back and then polish them up again. I don't know whether dipping them in the future will actually get rid of that because it is quite severe. Even holding it on an angle, you can actually see the sink into the middle. But same with these bigger guys here as well. Um, so that's something that will have to be taken care of, guys. And it may not bother you because it's only small little windows. You're not going to see much through them anyway. But it's something I would probably uh, be inclined to, to file it back and then sand it back and then polish it up. Um, just to get rid of that because it is very very severe when you when you actually see it in real life it's way too severe uh, more bits and pieces rolling around here guys um, won't worry too much about showing you these they're all pretty much the same again bits of flashing but nothing too bad um, and all these injector marks that you know pins that come off just the outsides of the wings everywhere that have to be cleaned up as well uh, but again it's got that nice surface to it so hopefully uh, what I might do later on, I might give it a, a, a quick little mist spray with undercoat and see whether that shows through the paint because it looks really, really fine and, and I'm just sort of worried if you put a couple of coats of paint on, it's going to disappear. But, um, yeah, well, I guess we'll see. But that's probably about all I can show you guys rather than picking up all the little bits and pieces floating around here. I'll just, um, I might just leave it at that because as you can see, there's not much more there. A um, couple of little bits of ant nest in there that I'll have to clean out as well. But anyway guys, that's about all I can do for the review. Um, hopefully it gives you an idea of what 
some of these older kits are like, and as you can see, the amount of work that will have to go into this to um, to bring it up to something, you know, spot on. Uh, it, it definitely won't compete with, say, like your wingnut kits and things like that. You can't expect them to be in the same league. Uh, I mean, wingnuts are in a league in their own as far as World War One stuff goes. They're, they're just outstanding. Um, but it doesn't mean that you can't build a beautiful kit out of these, like I say. I've seen it done. Just pre be prepared to put the extra time in to do it. Um, you may not be able to get a certain aircraft like this one in any other brand. Um, so you, you'll have to, if you want this, you'll have to build it in this brand. And that's that's the trap with having to buy all the kits sometimes. It's the only ones available. So, and like I say, they build up beautifully if you put the work into them. So it's always that choice between you just say you want to do a spat or something and um, there's one available in wing nuts, but it's a $200 kit, whereas you can get one for 20 bucks second hand off a mate down the street with an older, it's an older airfix or something like that. Do you want to put the work in or do you want to pay the extra money and not have to worry about all the detail work? Uh, but anyway guys, that's about all I can say on this kit. Uh, like always, check out the links down there below uh, for Facebook and Patreon and all that sort of thing. Uh, hit that thumbs up if you liked the video. Uh, leave comments down there guys. Uh, I know just about every time I put up something these days, I'm learning something off you guys. There's always someone that that'll put something up that I didn't know anything about that, that subject. Uh, but it's one of the things I love about this hobby is I'm always learning. Uh, and I guess you guys are all the same. You, you never ever know everything. Uh, there's so much out there in the hobby world that you, you're forever learning stuff, especially about different types of vehicles and things like that. Um, but anyway, guys, uh, there's a sub button down there. If you like my videos, hit the sub button down there to sub the channel as well. And like always, guys, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.